they're bad for the Democrats. Things are are bad and getting worse. And I I I've got to make sure you are clear on something here because this is really important. Now here is Steve Ratner who worked for Barack Obama talking about oil production in the United States. So the president's talked about OPEC increasing production. We have the potential here to increase production as well. We can drill oil wells down in Texas that come online very quickly. We can drill gas wells up in Appalachia. They come on even more quickly. Gas, natural gas prices, as you know, are set domestically, not internationally. Natural gas has gone from $2 to $5 during this period. Is the president in favor of, in the short run, are drilling more wells in America to provide more oil and gas for the American people? He's not. And this is what you have to understand. Your high gas prices, the fuel at the pump, the cost of a barrel of oil, is directly related to the policies of the Biden administration. This is by design. The Biden administration cannot now admit it is by design, but they were admitting it was by design prior to the election with their advocacy of the Green New Deal. The left believes they need to shape the supply and demand curve to reduce supply of oil so that the price per barrel goes up in order to then reduce the demand for oil. It is an artificial adjustment to the supply and demand curve by government policy. The Biden administration killed the Keystone XL pipeline. They have rescinded leases for drilling on federal land. They've blocked further production in the United States, and they want us dependent on OPEC because they want the price of a barrel of oil to go up because if that price goes up, your ability to buy it goes down. The problem is that it doesn't just affect the price at the fuel pump. It affects the price of beef. It affects the price of poultry. It affects the price of milk. It affects the price of grocery items in general because it costs more to deliver those items to grocery stores because last I checked, we don't have battery-powered 18-wheelers right now. So they have to put fuel in their car or in their 18-wheelers, and those go to the store. And that price slowly trickles down to you in the form of increased costs. It was all foreseeable. It was all predictable. It is all a part of the policies of the Biden administration. You now have the Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm, telling people, yes, you're going to have higher energy prices this winter that we need to move to renewables. We, we need to move to solar and wind. Again, in Texas, they moved to solar power and wind power. And when the ice storm hit last year, they were in the dark and people froze to death because they did not have the baseload energy capable of being able to flip a switch and meet the demand. Wind power and solar power come on when the wind blows and the sun shines. If the wind doesn't blow or they freeze, which they did because the Texans didn't buy ones that wouldn't freeze. But even so, there were those that didn't freeze and the wind wasn't blowing. It was very cold, but the wind wasn't blowing. So they generated no power. And the solar had ice and snow on top of them. They didn't generate power. And you didn't have enough coal plants or nuclear plants. In the left does not want nuclear power. They don't want nuclear power. They want solar and wind because they're not really serious about this. I saw someone earlier say they'll believe that all the, the Gen Z kids are really serious about global warming when they give up Bitcoin because of the amount of energy used to produce Bitcoin. Now, where does all of this go? Well, here's Jennifer Granholm with Dana Bash talking about the price at the pump. So according to AAA, the national average of gas prices is now $3.42 a gallon. Bank of America is predicting crude oil prices could soar another 50% by next June. Could the average gas price in America be $4 a gallon in the United States soon? Well, we certainly hope not. Uh, the, as I say, the Energy Information Agency is going to put out their forecast this week president is all over this. Of course, every president is frustrated because they can't control the price of gasoline because it's a global market. Um, he can call upon increased supply, which he has done. And OPEC uh, is unfortunately 
controlling the agenda with respect to oil prices. OPEC is a cartel and it controls over 50% of the supply of gasoline. But we were a net exporter of petroleum when Donald Trump was president. So what changed? Well, killing Keystone, canceling leases on federal land, increasing regulation. The Biden administration has made it very, very difficult for petroleum manufacturers in this country to produce petroleum. This is a logical consequence of the Biden administration's policies. It is by design. They cannot acknowledge it's by design, though. Why? Why can't they acknowledge it's by design? Because... If they were to embrace it and say, yes, we caused this by design, it would hurt them even more at the polling. And what's the state of play right now? This is Chuck Todd on Meet the Press yesterday. So what happened to Democrats on Tuesday goes far beyond the defeat of Terry McAuliffe in Virginia or Governor Phil Murphy's narrow escape in New Jersey. If you look at it from coast to coast, it was a warning to Democrats that their congressional majorities are in grave danger. Yes. Why? Because gas prices. Ultimately, it's an economic issue. But here's a further problem. Economically, it's a cultural issue as well. Because a lot of Americans live in suburbs and rural areas and they commute. The Democrats, as I've mentioned repeatedly, want them all in cities where they're using public transportation. So you're using less cars. So you're producing less emissions. So you're reducing your carbon footprint. But Americans are not going to be cajoled and badgered into moving into cities for cheaper gas. They want cheaper gas. This is having a direct result on Joe Biden's popularity and approval in this country. And the left, which is, again, doing this by design, can't acknowledge it because then they would have to own it. And in this political climate, they can't own it. So they have to excuse and say, it's OPEC, it's OPEC, it's OPEC. Again, every American needs to remember when Donald Trump was president, the United States was a net exporter of oil and gas. The Biden administration policies across the board are having the effect that they are intended to have. And the intention is to drive up your costs so that you have to switch to something else. The problem is that the else, the something else, is not ready to come to market. We don't have a chain of battery charging stations around the country. And if you listen to the left, they say, well, it's in the Green New Deal. It's in the infrastructure bill. Why is it in the infrastructure bill? Because what's happening was by design. If you listen to them, they say, well, we need more people in battery-powered cars. Well, people don't have the money. So the left says, well, we put into the infrastructure bill subsidy so people can get them. Why did you do that? Because higher gas prices are by design problem is it's going to roll out over 10 years, not immediately. Americans shouldn't have to suffer that long. So now what's the state of play here? It wasn't just Virginia. And in focusing so much on Virginia, if you listen to that Chuck Todd clip, he mentions New Jersey. In New Jersey, the Democratic governor came close to losing in a very Democratic state. Why? Because the confluence of all of these events are conspiring to make the Democrats very unpopular. CNN has a poll out that has the generic ballot at D plus 10. For perspective, it was D plus eight in reality in 2018. USA Today has a poll out that has an R plus 10. In fact, CNN is the only poll. It is the outlier poll. All the other polling has the generic ballot swinging rapidly in the Republicans' favor. What do we have to do here? As I've said before, broken record time. Pay attention to the trend lines, not the numbers. Every pollster I've had here to talk about polling has the same thing. Pay attention to the trend line, not the polling. So let me give you the trend line here. CNBC dims plus two. NPR dims plus three. Harvard, or no, NBC dims plus two. Harvard Harris, Republicans plus three. Politico tie. Economists, Democrats plus seven. CNN, among registered voters, Democrats plus five. Emerson, Republicans up seven. USA Today, Republicans up eight. What is the average? What is the polling average? Democrats plus 0.1. Plus 0.1. This isn't good for the Democrats. 
Obviously not. But wait, there's more. What's the president's job approval rating? The USA Today Suffolk poll has the president down 21 points. 38% approve, 59% disapprove. Again, though, don't pay attention to the number. Pay attention to the trend. If you want to know an interesting data point, USA Today Suffolk has the president's disapproval rating higher than even Rasmussen has, which is a Republican-leaning poll. Rasmussen has the president down 15. USA Today has him down 21. His actual spread in the polling average is down 8.9%. There is only one poll out there that has the president's approval up above disapprove, and that's Reuters, Ipsos, and he's plus one. And that's a poll of all Americans. 48 approve, 47 disapprove. The trend lines for the president and the Democrats are bad. And this all comes back to economic issues, but those economic issues are actually cultural issues. Now, what do I mean by them being actually cultural issues? Well, the culture of America is a car culture. But it's bigger than even that. The democratic culture is one of city public transportation. But it's bigger than that. It translates into worldviews and philosophies moving forward. And the Democrats have lost touch with your average American out there on cultural issues that translates then into making decisions that affect the economy. And across the board from the economy to culture, they're losing the American voter, which means that the ballot box next year is going to be a bloodbath for the Democrats because they are so now institutionally and emotionally invested in cultural and economic issues that are losers with the bulk of the American public. And they're starting to realize that their days are numbered in Washington, and it's making them even more hysterical.